Roland Martin. Roland Martin is not in Washington, D.C. this morning. Roland, where are you? I'm in Indianapolis. Uh, last night, uh, I had my uh, school choice, the Black Choice Initiative here at the Indianapolis Public Library, a packed house with 400 people talking about uh, education, charters, vouchers, all those issues. And I uh, uh, had a great time with the folks here just uh, trying to get us to, uh, to have black folks uh, more uh, involved with all of those different options. And so I had a, a great time here. And so um, uh, it's part of the first city of a 10 city tour that, I, that I'll launch. And so we will. Uh, be announcing the next city real soon, and so uh, looking forward to it. You weren't there um, for uh, the uh, Northwestern and Ohio State game on Saturday, huh? Oh, you, hell you no. didn't go either. <laughs> to that. Oh, I, I, first, I mean, I, why, why would I do? First of all, that was even we. Of course, Ohio State was going to win that game. That was like and that wasn't always a given, was it, Roland? And that wasn't really necessary, no, I, was I, it? That was not I, necessary. Like, <laughs> Like varsity and JV. <laughs> <You know. laughs> okay, Mr. A&M. Okay. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Go Cats. That's all I got to say. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm like, okay, all right then, but okay. Go, go, go JV. Go JV. All right. Oh, Roland. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's talk about, uh, folks, uh, Democrats are taking control uh, of the House. They will be, of course, uh, sworn into power on uh, in January 3rd. But in addition to, uh, of course, uh, uh, Nancy Pelosi becoming Speaker of the House, of course, Jim Clyburn, uh, African-American becoming a House um, House Whip, and then, of course, Kareem, excuse me, Hakeem Jeffries becoming uh, chair of the uh, House Democratic Caucus. What does it mean in terms of other jobs that when it comes to staff well uh it's not like uh democrats uh look real good when it comes to diversity in these jobs joining us right now is spencer overton president and ceo of the joint center for political and economic studies of course leading black think tank in the country when it comes to uh politics but uh, he joins us right now spencer um we talked of course last year about the senate uh, the pressure being put on them, uh, Democrats, to fill those critical uh, jobs. But explain to folks, again, why it matters in terms of the diversity when it comes to these House staffing positions. Good morning, Roland. It matters because these staffing positions, they make big decisions, right? We we're talking about uh, the oversight of, you know, the president and all the agencies. We're talking about a $4 trillion budget. We're talking about setting the legislative agenda. So these top positions are important. And in our report, we found that there were very few black folks in these top positions. So black folks are, are 12% of the U.S. population. They're only 7% of the top House staff. And it's a especially a problem among white Democrats. So, for example, white Democrats, their districts are 37 percent people of color, but only 2 percent of their top staff are black. Uh, and so this is, in fact, Republicans have more top staff of color than Democrats do. We've got a great opportunity to change this narrative right now because the chairs of committees, uh, or rather the ranking members who are in the minority, they'll double the size of their staff on their committees when they become chairs. And then you've got all these new Democratic members. They have to hire their staff outright. So we can change this problem right now. When you say it's top position, explain to people what those positions are. Are we talking about chief of staff? Uh, what other kind of positions? Yes. Great. So most members have three top staffers, a chief of staff, a legislative director, and a communications director, right? We found that the overwhelming majority of the members of House had no people of color in their, in their top, uh, these three top positions, even though many of them came from very diverse districts. We found there were over 100 members who had districts that ranged from 33% people of color all the way up to 93% people of color, no top staff of color in these positions. For example, Steve Cohen, in Memphis, not one top staffer of color, very black district, but no black folks, you know, white folks in his, his top positions. And again, I know somebody is saying, OK, well, OK, I get it. But here's the here's the deal. Not only so when people in corporate America, when it comes to these lobbying firms, when it comes to all these different other folks in politics, when they're looking to hire folks, which uh 
they, they look to the staffers on Capitol Hill. And then what then happens, and then in those positions, they have the ability to hire numerous people uh, as well. And so it goes beyond just those committees. So we're talking not just about those jobs. We're talking about the next level of jobs, how that even impacts diversifying corporate America. That's right. It's a stepping stone to corporate America. It's also a stepping stone to being commissioners, you know, throughout the federal government, because people who are generally in Congress can get confirmed because they know all the the insiders. So many of the people who are nominated to be commissioners uh, of agencies and executive branch, et cetera, those people were top staffers before. So uh, foundations, it's really a stepping stone to many positions of power within our country. Okay, I get it. I get it. Staff is a very important. But in the case like in Memphis, how do you get people of color on the staff of that congressman? How do you how yeah, do you well, make him how do you make him do that? Yeah, well, it, this is number one in terms of uh, the exposure, in terms of the data, and in terms of folks really calling their members and saying, this is a priority. This is important for you to hire top staff of color. It's also important that we have, uh, uh, you know, people in those feeder positions to top staff. So, for example, uh, in many of these places, especially on the Senate, we found they didn't even have black people in the feeder positions to the top position. So if you don't have a black legislative assistant, you're never going to have a black legislative director. So, Mr. Spencer, last year when you called out the United States Senate, Chuck Schumer said there was going to be this ruiny rule. Uh, uh, so did we see an yeah, how much progress was in made? Democrats hiring uh, of black staffers and people of color? We did see an incredible amount of progress. So, for example, uh, down in, in Alabama, uh, where Doug Jones was elected, there were no black chiefs of staff of the Democrats. In fact, back then, the Republicans had more black top staff than the Democrats did. Uh, Doug Jones hired the fl- first black chief of staff. Uh, right now, we've got a total of six uh, black top staff, uh, and, and the numbers have increased basically 133 percent since we started uh, making this bi- this big push on the Senate side. So we have an opportunity to increase it significantly on the House side right now with this change in power. All right. So, uh, folks, uh, the person who can make it happen, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Democrats owe black people. And so we should be uh, calling her office and saying, we want to see black staffers in these critical positions, right, Spencer? That's right. Thank you. All right. Mr. Overton, I appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. All right, Roland.